Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel. If you're new here, please subscribe. I'd really love that if you're returning. How you doing? Um, what we're going to be talking about right now is what people are seeing and experiencing in everyday life when it comes to being of the prepared mind. And I get sent pictures and videos, emails and links. And if there's anything that you would like to send me for a video, my email is in the description box below. So this first email comes in from a community member. And he said... We have our canners, extra gaskets, weights, those little pop-up thingies in the front that tells us that the canner ha has pressure in it. That's called the nipple. <laughs> and the little rubber thingy in the back that is supposed to... Dads? Rings? Dads? Doodads? Doodads. Okay. Uh, rings, canning tools like jar grabbers, debubblers, and anything else we can think of. Yeah, same here. Same here, except for like the jars and the rings and the lids, because those things are really hard to come by unless you're getting them on Amazon. I mean, they're really hard to come by. Um, two little tools I seldom see mentioned, uh, though, are as important as the weights. We need timers, manual timers or a way to tell how much time has passed or is left to finish the canning process. And ta-da, pipe cleaners. Pipe cleaners, really. I had a situation with my canner and turned it off. I was advised to clean out the vent pipe with a pipe cleaner. Really? Of course, I had looked through the pipe and made sure it was clear but before putting the lid on the canner, then put the weight on the pipe. Uh, so no pipe cleaners, no way to go get one. And I did not want to refrigerate everything for the next few days until I could get to a store. I thought of using a broom straw, a broom straw. What's that? Decided against it, turned the water on full force and then squirted it through the lid from the inside of the lid to the outside. Yes, it worked finish my canning for the day. So the point of my wordy post is to have the tools to repair your tools too. Ah, gotcha. Thank you for all you do. Do not hesitate to feel bad to take time for yourself and take the day off. <laughs> I would, but you know what? I get antsy. I get antsy if I don't film and talk to you guys. Yes, it's true. Um, have, what about if you don't have pipe cleaners? What about straw cleaner? You know how a lot of people use metal straws. I use metal straws. Okay. And the one thing that I always have are straw cleaners for my metal straws. How about those? Yeah, they're reusable. So how about getting some of those too? That would work instead of a pipe cleaner as well. And you can use those and they bend and go in all sorts of directions and stuff like that too. Just a thought. So here is an email from a community member along with some really awesome pictures. So I hope you're ready to be inspired. She said, good morning. Keep it real. Keep it real. I try, but sometimes the powers that be do not like it when I keep it real. Girl, you know this, okay? She said, from canning to mylar bagging it up, I have six to five pound bags of six to 65 pound bag. Or six to five pound bag. Oh, six, five pound bag. Good Lord. Of Idaho instant potatoes. For a total of 39 pounds. That did 16 one gallon mylar bag. My husband is laughing at me. Why are you laughing at me? It's a video. Oh, it's a video. Your ass, it's a video. Took me a year to get it done that I had stored in airproof storage bin, but it's all done. I've got red Thai rice and beans yet to mylar bag up. God bless. Good Lord, girl, you are going. I love it. So here is an email from a community member, and she said, we live in a small town in southern Nevada. A couple of weeks ago in the evening, we lost water pressure. We texted several friends in the neighborhood to see if they were having the same problem, and yes. An hour later, we got a text from one of our friends that a main water, uh, a water main, sorry, had broken. 
and was being worked on. The water pressure was restored. The next day we lost water pressure again. It wasn't until the next day, two days after the first problem, that we got a pre-recorded message on my cell phone from the water company advising us we were under a boil water order. They wait two days to tell you that? Can you imagine how many people got sick? Being the people we are, I opened up a case of bottled water, put bottles um, in each bathroom, by the coffee pot, and in the fridge. I also got out ice cube tray and made fresh ice. Got out my huge soup pot and used it to boil water on the stove. I also have an electric tea kettle that I used on the kitchen counter. I normally drink bottled water or a diet drink during the day. Unfortunately, the big guy drinks water from the line to the fridge and uses the ice. He'd been drinking the water all the time. We first lost pressure until the boil water noticed he experienced four days of diarrhea. No. He got the diarrhea. Oh, no. I'm so sorry. Oh, now he's going to be dehydrated. Tell him to drink some Gatorade. Yeah. Two days after the first notice, we got another notice to continue boiling water. After a week... We got online to check with the water company and found out the order had been rescinded two days after the second notice. The water company never sent out a notice to ourself. What, what's wrong with them? Why are they not doing their job? I don't trust them. We have taken every precaution to drain the water line to the fridge for the water dispenser and the ice maker. We are still using bottled water or boiled water for the coffee machine and the ice cube tray. I've been using bottled and boiled water for cooking and brushing our teeth. We are prepared for this incident. I have added several half-gallon storage pitchers to hold boiled water. We also <clears throat> replaced the cases of water we used after the panic buying at the store settled down. This is a wake-up call and also a good learning experience. Everything being said, we are prepared. Oh, my good God, girl. I hope he's, I hope the husband's feeling okay. I hope he's feeling better. And I'm glad you guys got through it. See, this is what it takes. You got to be prepared. Nobody listens. You listen, obviously, but I'm just saying, not a lot of people listen. Maybe they'll listen now, you know? Wait. So this community member sent me a picture. Stormy bug. And she also commented on a video and she's like, did you get my Sorry about that. Stormy sat on the USB that connects the microphone, yeah, and the camera to the laptop, and everything cut out because he's too big to be in my way. Anyway, so a community member, I'll start over. She sent me a picture. <clears throat> And then she uh, commented on a video and she's like, did you see the picture that I sent you? And I said, yes. I said, I was at the doctor's office and I said, I was trying to figure out what the hell I was looking at. <laughs> Here it's bacteria. Look at this. Okay. It's herbal essence shampoo that she bought at Sam's club. Now herbal essence wants her to send it to them. Because they have to run tests on it to see what's going on with it. I'm very strange. I just went to go look for her comment on the video and it's not there. I don't know what the hell happened. Anyway, so they want her to send the bottle to them so they can run tests on it. Take a look. Um, I, I just wanted to let you know that I got your email, okay? She was informed that she no longer has ac access to the comment section uh, because of her comments. Um, it was on the Tyson Amazon video. Um, I tried hmm, to email you, Jolyn, okay? And it was sent back to me saying address not found. So obviously they got to your emails as well, okay? So... Um, I don't know if you can still email me, but I cannot email you. Okay. So I just wanted to let you know that I tried to respond to you and it said address not found. All right. So it says, 
uh, your message was delivered was not delivered because the address could not be found or it's unable to receive mail. So they got to your email. I'm sorry. So here is an email that I received from a community member. Okay. And she sent me a picture and some links. All right. So she said, so weird stuff. I have fallen down deep into a rabbit hole. Oh dear Lord. <laughs> With this impending solar eclipse. Oh my dear God. No, not you too. Yeah. There is so many questions that I have when I tell you I have read everything that I could possibly read. I have watched every video I could possibly watch. And I still, girl, when I tell you, what is the big flip flop and deal with this eclipse? Okay. I know that back in the 1800s with those eclipses, there were thousands of earthquakes that followed. Okay. And the, uh, the Madrid fault or the fault on the Madrid or however you want to say, um, the new Madrid fault. Okay. Are we going to be seeing something like that again? Is this why they are taking the precautions they are take, uh, you know, taking now what's really going on? Why are they not being transparent? Why are they not telling the truth? And she said, and honestly, it's getting odder by the day. Yeah, no kidding. So she sent me this picture and I'm going to read it to you and then I'll put it up. I said, okay, this delves even more into the pending solar eclipse. Definitely need to watch it, but let me hit the high points. In Syria, back in biblical times, there was said to have been multiple solar eclipses, and then a little afterwards, they were hit with a big earthquake, right? Which they thought was a sign of God's judgment, and it was followed by seven years of hardships, which we know today as a seven-year famine, right? Uh, the, the, the um, what do you want? My brain, mom brain, mom brain, kicking in scrambled eggs, um, the plagues and all that. And she said, so it goes on and says, there's actually three eclipses evolved, involved in this thing. 20, 2017, there's, uh, which the path of totality crossed uh, over seven cities, all named Salem. 2023, which no one seems to be mentioning, but when added to the other paths of totality creates two X's, right, which has never happened before, right, and that's with the new Madrid fault and all that, 2024, which the path of totality will cross over seven cities, all named Nineveh, okay, um, here, there's a thing about Jonah being spit from the whale, and then going to a city named the same as the ones in 2024, path of totality, uh, there's apparently reports of fish behaving very strangely, Look to the waters has been something that been said a lot since the pandemic path of totality is currently experiencing severe weather issues, but something like this happened in the 1800s, right? With the solar eclipses intersecting and the area experienced earthquakes a few months later, right? Where, where the three eclipses intersected in two different states, there is a deep connection with Egypt. Uh, and Egypt is also where all of the, uh, the um, plagues happened and stuff like that. If you remember that, if you read your Bible, that's where all the plagues happened. Okay. Because God got pissed. Okay. I mean, literally he got, he got very pissy and he said, okay, you don't want to play my game. I boom. And he hit him. Okay. Yeah. So also there's a comment that will be visible during all of this. That is said to look like a devil with two horns. Oh, good Lord. I, I didn't want to know that. I didn't want to know that. Okay, so here's this. So then this is the uh, article that she sent me, Waco, Texas. Uh, they voted on Thursday night that students will be out of school on April 8th, the day of the solar, solar eclipse. Students will instead attend school on April 15th, which was originally scheduled as bad weather day for the district. Other Central Texas schools districts to cancel classes on for April 8th include Belton ISD, Temple ISD, Colleen ISD, and Midway ISD. Okay. So then she goes on to say, now I've also heard that other countries have been saying the U.S. needs to prepare for what is coming. Not sure what that means. Yes, I know. And so because believe me, when I tell you, 
I dig as much as you do. I really do. And I, I literally, my, my brain just gets scrambled. Like I, like I always say, I have scrambled egg for brains because I dig that much. And I actually give myself migraines and my husband's like, go to bed, <laughs> go to bed, knock it off. Uh, and he takes my stuff license away from me. <laughs> um, because yes, I, I understand, you know, um, and I, I, I've known about all of this stuff and, uh, you know, I, I tried to talk about it and yeah, I know. So she goes on to say that local government offices are being closed during as well as schools in multiple locations along the path of totality. Then I heard uh, in some locations they're going to have National Guard present as well as in one location, a special hazmat team, which is on standby. Hazmat. Wow. Okay. They're all still saying it's because of the tourists. I, no. 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 I, I think that's a patsy. They're using that as a patsy. They're using that as an excuse. There's something, dude, when I tell you something big is going to happen, man. And I, 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 I literally like, I mean, with all the shit that's been happening with Haiti and they're all coming up here and stuff like that. And then April 8th, it's not that far away, man. Okay. I'm telling you, shit, it's going to hit the fan, man. And I don't know what it is. I really don't. But the eclipse, I'm telling you. No one has ever made a stink about an eclipse ever before. No one. No county officials have ever told their citizens to stock up for at least two weeks when it comes to an eclipse. I don't care what anybody says. You can look back in history because I've done my research. No officials have ever told their citizens, their residents, to stock up for two weeks when it comes to an eclipse. No, it's never happened. Never. I mean, what is this? Stranger things? Or, or, or is things going to come up from the upside down? I, I'm serious. It's never happened. Ever. Never, ever. So she goes on to say, we're telling people in some area to make sure that they have a fuel gas tanks, supplies for one to two weeks. Yes. Uh, and also that communications may be interrupted. Every day is just weirder. But, you know, maybe my tinfoil hat is on too tight. What do you think? No, it's not on too tight. It's really not because you are thinking you're on the same level as I am. You are thinking the same way that I am. Nothing is adding up. Nothing. Nothing is adding up. And I don't care what anybody says. Nothing is adding up. And she said, oh, also, I just heard my area has pretty big solar farms. Someone drove by it today. They said that apparently the storm we just had looks to have taken out 90% of the solar panels. I heard somebody else say that too. Yeah. Oh, my area is also already seeing the family dollar locations closing. Really? And I saw that Joanne's Fabrics is official, <clears throat> officially declaring bankruptcy. I just love when that happens. 2024 and it's only March. I know. I know. Well, I said it, I, I said it, I don't know how long ago, 2024 was going to be, our, the. we thought 2023 was bad. We thought 2020 was bad. You ain't seen shit yet. You ain't seen it. You ain't seen it. No. I don't care what anybody says. I don't care what anybody says. But it's going to hit the fan this year. It is. All right, let's I'm out of here, okay? I will see you in the next one. You stay safe, you stay positive, you keep prepping, and as always, fear less. Ciao.